Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Saturday, February 17th, 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Did you feel it? A 4.7 magnitude in South Texas was felt in Round Rock. Ma many aftershocks. We'll get to the full analysis in a moment. But Europe about to get smothered in the global warming goodness. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. California braces for heavy rain and snow systems this weekend and into the week. As one storm system pummels the state with rain on Saturday, a second, even stronger storm will move in by Sunday, and that'll be their fun day. As New York City is walloped by fast-moving snowstorm that surpasses forecasts. In fact, overnight snowfall brought nearly 10 inches to parts of New York City, and many other regions. Let's take a look at the snowfall analysis as of 6 a.m. this morning. You can see that wide swath of a foot of snow moving from Pennsylvania through central Jersey there and into New York. Heavy snow as well as from uh, Charleston all the way north near Pittsburgh. Heavy snow in Ohio and portions of Indiana as well. And those aren't the totals. This is just as of 6 a.m. this morning. And more snow is coming. In fact, impactful rain and mountain snow expected across the West. Additional snowfall in the Northeast and Upper Midwest. Multiple rounds of heavy rainfall and mountain snow will continue across much of California through early next week. Flooding and high surf, gusty winds will all be possible. Lingering lake effect snow will begin to taper off early Sunday, however, and a clipper system moving out of southern Canada will produce light snow across portions of the northeast and upper Midwest Great Lakes through Monday, which will be their fun day. Let's walk it through. You can see heavy snow dumping in the west and those Great Lakes lake effect stringers happening. This is over the next six hours. We'll move it through here Sunday all the way till Monday morning. By then, could be as much as 16 inches in the Sierras and the Pacific Northwest with quite a good smattering. Heavy totals up in the lake effect zones. Here is Monday into Tuesday and Wednesday. By then, four to six feet of snow in many regions of the Central Sierras and average to heavy snow, six to 10 inches in the higher elevations for most of the Northern Rockies. We'll move it through Thursday and into Friday. By the weekend, more snow should be moving into the Northeast and another system coming into the Pacific Northwest by early week. And it's looking like a very good snow forecast for the West, as well as the Northeast through the end of February. And March is looking to be epic. When, in fact, we get the most snow in Colorado in the month of March. So stay tuned for epic totals. And, well, shut up, Al. Get your hole. That's going to last a while. Europe is in for the big burial. Take a look. The U.K., especially Scotland, uh, are going to be picking up heavy snow totals. It looks like in the next seven days, as well as the Alps, in the long-term forecast, the Alps look like they're going to be tilted in the record direction. Also, there's going to be some snow in northern Africa there, which we can see we're going to be picking up in just a few days there. So we could be seeing some interesting things develop in Europe as we enter spring. Ding, ding. Did you feel it? A 4.7 magnitude struck South Texas, and they felt it in Round Rock. In fact, more than a dozen earthquakes have been recorded in South Texas within the last week, with its two strongest yet felt in Central Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Here we can see right down there on the border of uh, the quakes in question. And there have been multiple aftershocks here. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quakes. You can see the initial 4.7 right there. And the closest quakes to that would be a 4.4 and a 3.9 aftershock. Also a 3 magnitude, a 3.3, a 2.6, and a 3.7. And there is your seismic swarm in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. No other quakes of note worldwide. Activity is quite quiet across the western front. The Reykjanes Peninsula is quiet as well. Let's take a look at all regions over here at Iceland. We have had an uptick in activity of course, on the Vatna Yokel Glacier near Bardabunga. 
and some activity on the Tyrannus Fracture Zone, as well as offshore on the Reykjanes Ridge. So, still very seismically active in Iceland, and an eruption is imminent in Grindavik, maybe in a week or so. Now, scientists may have accidentally found a mysterious magma reservoir in a volcanoless region of Alaska, and it happens to be where one of the largest mountains in North America exist, and we're talking about Denali. Now, many people thought Denali must be a volcano. And in fact, while tracking seismic activity on Denali, scientists stumbled upon an anomaly that could indicate the presence of magma, in which case, this is a huge volcano which could be very dangerous to Earth. Here is the paper coming out 11th of December, 2023. The crustal magmatic structure beneath the Denali volcano gap imaged by dense linear seismic array. And the good news is that hopefully it isn't building enough magma to actually erupt. Now, Denali is situated above a downgoing subduction plate. And in most tectonic settings on Earth like this, you have volcanoes at the surface where this is occurring, such as in Chile, Mexico, and the Pacific Northwest, and most of the Aleutians. Study co-author Carl Tape, a professor in geophysics at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, told Live Science in an email, we were surprised, though not shocked, to find evidence of magma beneath Denali. And that is a gigantic volcano boom which we may dive deeper into on our radio show on Saturday. Worldwide Volcano News Update. No other volcanoes of note to report on. All normal activity worldwide. As we head over to space weather, where the sun has gone quiet again and is lacking sunspots. Uh, the sunspots that are turning away on the limb could produce X or M flares because of the Earth-facing quiet conditions, and this spot probably won't do much either. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet, KP223, respectively, through February 19th. KP has be been below two for three days. And that is quite quiet. In fact, should be a lot of chemtrails, quote-unquote, or persistent contrails over the last three days. Now, please join us tomorrow over at X, formerly known as Twitter, at Oppenheimer Ranch Project, at Diamond the Dave, where we are going to have a live space with the Shepherd of Truth and, of course, none other than Ashton Forbes at Just X Ashton. Diamond Ashton, uh, the Shepherd of Truth, and anyone that wants to join the space will be allowed to interact with us. Just raise your hand and you'll be able to ask a question. That's going to be 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, and 1 p.m. Pacific. Tomorrow on X. And did you ever wonder about super volcanoes? I'm sure you have. Here's a map of the 18 most well-known super volcanoes. And the list is below. Volcanoes like Yellowstone, Long Valley, Lake Toba, Topol, Campi Felegri, La Galita, and many others you're well aware of. But in fact, the two largest super volcanoes are unknown to most humans. And they're not even on this map. And we're talking about Gackle Ridge Caldera and Apolaki Caldera. Gackle Ridge in the Arctic Circle and Apolaki offshore of the Philippines. The two largest supervolcanoes on Earth you never heard of. And Lee and I are going to break it all down over in the next hour over at Magnetic Reversal News in just a few minutes. So join us for that discussion, a mind-blowing discussion on the two biggest volcanoes that they don't want you to know about. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our podcasts in one place, commercial free. And most importantly, be safe, because we love you. And join us over at Magnetic Reversal News in just a few minutes for an eye-opening scientific discussion on the two largest supervolcanoes you've never heard of. Mm-hmm.